Yang is a North Korean exile now living in South Korea who has known much pain and suffering in her life, both physically and emotionally. Yang says life in North Korea was unbearable and brutal. I was living in the poorest village in North Korea. We had to eat sand, which was hard to get. I had to go far away to get this sand, and only a few people got some. I also had to eat wood. It was difficult to go to the bathroom. At the peak of the famine in the mid-1990s, Yang says 10 or 11 people in her village were starving to death every day. Many suffered mental breakdowns as unspeakable horrors took place. Desperate to help her family that included two daughters, Yang snuck into China in 1998. She wanted to earn money, then return to North Korea and start a small business. With the Chinese police looking for North Korean defectors, Yang was unable to work and return home, where she was viewed as a traitor and abused and beaten. In 2002, she fled North Korea again to China with hopes of making some money. There, Yang met an ethnic Korean woman who was operating a rice-selling business. This woman was a Christian. Before this lady left the house, she prayed. At work, she prayed. I asked her what she was doing, and she said she believed in God and went to church. I asked her, what was church? She told me about the existence of God, and if you meet God, you will be blessed. Yang gave her life to Christ and returned to North Korea, where she would begin a business now as a Christian. I was doing a noodle and rice business in North Korea, and as I learned in China, I prayed when I was doing my business. The lady beside me asked what I was doing. I didn't say anything. Some of my relatives from China also saw me praying and told the lady I was a Christian, and she told the authorities that I was a Christian. The authorities brought Yang in for questioning, but they couldn't find any evidence that she'd become a Christian. Doing so is seen as an act of treason in North Korea, as only the worship of the Kim family is allowed. The lack of evidence didn't stop authorities from arresting Yang and beating and torturing her. This went on for a month. They used a shovel to beat people. That's what they did to me. Your body becomes blue everywhere. After I was released, I was followed everywhere by the authorities. I was not allowed to speak anywhere I went. My in-laws didn't even treat me like a human, so I decided to leave the country again. Yang went back to China in 2003, and while there, she was kidnapped. She was sold into slavery as a maid and repeatedly raped. I was sold to a businessman who owned a department store. I was locked in the house. I was a slave. The telephone line was cut and the doors were locked from the outside, so I couldn't run away. I was a slave there for one month and 13 days before I escaped. Yang's troubles in China continued, as she didn't speak the language and survival was extremely difficult. In 2006, while six months pregnant, she and a friend decided to try to make it to South Korea. With the help of some brokers, they were brought near the Mongolian border. It was winter and very cold. The ground was covered in snow. Yang and her friend got lost, and for three days they couldn't find the guards at the border garrison. Yang miscarried and placed the baby in a handbag. I didn't know what to do, but I had to walk. So I hung the bag around my neck and walked all night. All around us were skeletons and bones. Those bones were North Korean defectors. My friends started to rip my clothes because I didn't give her bread. Yang didn't have any food. Her friend was hallucinating. Yang was devastated as she watched her friend die in the snow in the bitterly cold temperatures of Mongolia. Her heart finally stopped, but I will never forget her eyes. She was crying and looked at me. After my friend died, I think I was in shock. I fell asleep. I woke up. I felt warm. I thought it was sunshine, and I had one hand on my friend and the other hand on my baby. It was still dark. I got up and prayed for the Lord to save me.
Two more days would pass before Yang was finally discovered by patrolling Mongolian border guards. They found her lying in the snow. She was unable to open her eyes or move. Yang was taken to a hospital in Mongolia. The bodies of her friend and baby were left behind. Yang suffered severe frostbite. Very little could be done by the medical staff in Mongolia, so Yang was flown to Seoul to the South Korean Armed Forces Medical Command. Because of the frostbite, all of Yang's toes were amputated on her left foot. There was also some damage to her right foot, and a nerve from her right thigh was transplanted to the left foot. Five years later, Yang is still in constant pain. With all that Yang has been through, it's amazing that she's been able to keep going and look to the future. She credits her faith in Jesus Christ as the reason she has hope, but admits her faith has been tested. When I almost died in Mongolia, I prayed for God's help. My baby died, my friend died, and God didn't answer my prayers. At the time, I was bitter, but God gave me the heart to leave and I kept praying to leave. He saved me. Now I have become a faithful Christian and to be a missionary for God. I am learning about God and I will live for God. Yang has suffered so much abuse and heartache over the years and with all that she's had to endure, you'd expect that she'd be bitter, but she's not. In fact, Yang is looking forward to the future as a missionary to North Koreans. I want to minister to the people of my home country. I want to make sure I spread the word of God. I want people to know that there is an invisible God who we are to believe in, whether they are in North Korea, China, or anywhere in the world. I also want to tell about real life in North Korea to the world, and that there are people like me in North Korea. It's a country that doesn't believe in God. The reason I choose to do missionary work is because there are many North Korean defectors living in the world. I want them to know I survived, and I will be more persuasive for them to believe in Christ. Should the door open, Yang would like to return to North Korea to bring her people the message of God's love and forgiveness, something she experienced after coming into a relationship with Jesus Christ, of which she sings about from the heart. <laughs> Officially, North Korea is divided into three classes the workers, the peasants, and the intellectuals, who are seen as equals in society. Hyonsun's family is from the workers' class. Her father is a driver for a government ministry. Her grandfather is a construction worker. Mother and grandmother are housewives. Housing is allocated by the state. Pyongyang is not representative of North Korea. It is the showcase capital. For its two million residents, it's considered a privilege to live here. State radio is piped to every kitchen in the block. Listeners can turn the volume down, but not off. Mm -hmm. 
The apartment has two bedrooms, one for Hyunsun, one for her parents. Her grandparents sleep on the floor where the family is eating. Hyunsun's television is a gift from the state, a reward for performance in the mass games of 2002. There is only one channel. It broadcasts propaganda news, films and entertainment for five hours per day. Kim Song Yeon is 11 years old and has performed in two mass games. Her family is from the intellectual class. Her father is a physics lecturer at Kim Il Sung University. Her mother is a housewife. She has two older sisters. One is 15 and a high school student. The eldest is 18, a high school graduate who will shortly be joining the army. Song Yeon's sisters have a room each. Her parents sleep on the lounge floor. Song Yeon sleeps in a different sister's room each night. for five years. Good translation. Next, the third sentence, who's it? This? Sonia, she's good, but in study, she's not very good. She spends a lot of time in practicing um, her skill in a sports club. So in comparison with other students, she does not spend a lot of time to study. So she's not very good in study, but she's quite good enough, not very bad. Hello everybody, everyone have us has something to do in the sheets. Most of us will join the Korean people's army. And no. no. E no. East West W West South. 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 So the first letters make up news. 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 News.
우리 수령님이 위대성을 대학생들 속에서 철저히 인식시켜드리겠습니다. 경양수님의 위대성은 크기 몇 가지입니까? 세 가지. 첫째는 사상의 위대성. 두 번째는 영의 위대성. 세 번째는 풍모의 위대성. 이렇게 경의하는 수렴의 위대성을 세 가지로 인식시켜드리겠습니다. 미제 침략자들은 어디를 침략하고 있습니까? 이러분들은 세계적인 정세를 얻고 보다 그 침략자들은 한시도 남은 침략하 벌써 침략하지 않는다는 그건 제국주의가 아닌 것입니다. 또 오늘 우리 혁명이 얼마나 어려운 속에서 진행되고 있습니까? 지구상에 하나밖에 남지 않은 조선의 사회주의를 없애버리려고 책동하는 이놈들은 우리나라를 거리, 압살, 질식시켜가지고 정당에는 사이지 버릇을 어떻게 하려고 하는 허물어 버리려고 하는 그 수령님들은 받을 때 자기 운명이 영원한 행복이 마련됐습니다. Baghdad has fallen to the Americans four days earlier, but there has been no official reporting of this in the state media. 아들이 없으니까 인민군대 좀 내보내서 좀 이거 좀 이거에 쪽 통일 위해서 이거 좀 뭐에 좀 주목 가지고 좀 기여할 수 있는 그런 아들이 없는 건좀 섭섭한 감정이 있습니다. 내 직업 자체가 인테리어가 나니까 이게 과학사부라 하니까 조용한 걸 좋아하는데 이 집에 들어오면 그런 분위기가 안 서요. 아이들이 여자들이니까 그래서 여보 여보. 국왕이 너무 발전되어서 <웃음> 난 그저 우리 딸들 뭐 딸만이라고 해서 어, 섭섭하게 생각은 없다는 거 우리 딸들이 이제 잘 키워서 이제 나는 이제 인민군대 이제 에? 태권도 태권도 가지고 이제 군대에 나가서 좀 자기 일을 하고 말하자면 둘째는 좀 이거 조용한 성격에 이 공부밖에 모른다 말입니다. 그러니까 이건 과학자로 좀 키우려고 우리 막내에는 예능이 좀 밝으니까 이거 무용. 아무래도 언어가 다르고 어, 풍습도 다르니까 사람들이 어떤 때 즐거워하고 어떤 때 이게 분노해하고 이런 감정도 이게 특히 그 때리들이 나온 그 최근 국제 소식 같은 거. 우리 사람들이 옛날에는 이게 몰랐다 말입니다. 예? 근데 지금 이게 아주 정의로운 이런 걸 표현한다는 걸 아주 사람들이 알게 되고 그런 과정을 통해서 세계를 인식하고 